agreements, which include one establishing a binational commission to be chaired by the two heads of state. We'll meet annually from now onwards to ensure that relations at all levels are advanced for the benefit of our people. South Africa and Zimbabwe share not only strong political and cultural relations, but also, and most profoundly, the economies of our countries are historically interlinked. There are many similarities between our country's paths to economic prosperity. Consistent with the strong historical economic relations, a number of South African companies continue to operate in Zimbabwe, principally in the mining, tourism, agriculture, banking, and retail sectors. Foreign direct investment by South African entities in Zimbabwe between 2003 and 2013 amounted to approximately 12.8 billion rand, creating over 2,485,000 2, employment opportunities. South African companies in Zimbabwe include Netbank, Impala, Platinum, Standard Bank, Old Mutual, and Tonga Hulet, amongst many others. Historically, our two countries trade more with each other than with any other country on the continent. For an example, between 2005 and to 2014, South Africa's exports to Zimbabwe grew by 247% from 7.1 billion rand to 24.8 billion rand with the minimal contraction recorded in 2006 and 2009. In the same period, Zimbabwean exports to South Africa fell by 54.7% to 2 billion rand from 4.4 4 billion rand that was re reported in 2005. South Africa's exports to Zimbabwe comprise machinery, electrical equipment, mechanized, mechanical appliances, chemical products, based metals, mineral products, and agro-processing products. In 10, Zimbabwe exports <coughs> to South Africa include textile pills, <coughs> precious and semi-precious stones, as well as base metals and mineral products. You are meeting today to cement these trade relations and to explore new opportunities in the two countries. Opportunities for Deeper economic cooperation exists in the fields of mining, water, energy, infrastructure development, transport, ICT, among others. The existing trade relations 
and potential for further cooperation amplify the need for regional integration to be at the top of our economic agenda. The two governments have already paved the way for regional integration and bilateral economic cooperation through various agreements. These include the SADC trade protocols, <clears throat> South Africa Zimbabwe bilateral trade agreement, as well as the agreement on promotion and reciprocal protection of investment. In an effort to encourage investment into the economy of Zimbabwe, South Africa has also, through the Department of Trade and Industry, facilitated investment and trade initiatives to Harare and Bulawayo since 2010. South African companies seeking investment opportunities, joint venture partnerships and trade opportunities in the agro-processing, mining and capital equipment, infrastructure, energy, information and communication technology, and automotive components have participated in these initiatives. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is no stronger case for intra-African trade and diversifying away from the export of raw materials than the recent global financial crisis and the declining oil prices. All of these have decreased African export revenues generated from the Western markets. Despite the economic turbulence affecting the global economy, the economic outlook for Africa remains promising. An integrated Africa has a potential market of 2.6 trillion US dollars. A prosperous and growing African economy is good for our continent's development. It also offers many opportunities for mutually beneficial trade and investment partnerships between our two countries. However, Intra-regional trade and sustained growth on the continent must be preceded by enabling technical and transport infrastructure. In addressing these challenges, various African countries have signed the tripartite free trade area. One notable initiative already launched under the arrangement is the Tripartite North-South Corridor Investment Program with initial funding of 1.2 billion US dollars, a large proportion being funded from the African Development Bank and the Development Bank of Southern Africa and strong support from the South African government, actions are being taken to fast track this project. This program supports some of Africa's busiest trade routes linking the port of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania to the copper belt in Zambia, 
and into Lubumbashi in the DRC. It then continues down through Zimbabwe and Botswana to Africa's largest and busiest port, Durban, in South Africa. In fact, in effect, the North-South Corridor Initiative will serve eight countries, Tanzania, the DRC, Zambia, Malawi, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and South Africa. I'm honored to champion the North-South Corridor Initiative on behalf of the African Union, of which you are our chairperson, comrade president. It will unlock many opportunities in the continent. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the business delegation gathered here have the requisite skills in the various sectors and hope that true partnerships will be established to advance our bilateral economic cooperation. By working together, we believe that both South African and Zimbabwean enterprises can contribute meaningfully to Zimbabwe's agenda for sustainable socio-economic transformation, Zim Asset, which you briefed us about yesterday, Comrade President, and the African continent as a whole. Our two countries have an opportunity to capitalize on our abundant natural resources. In so doing, we can promote economic transformation through commodity-based industrialization. Our Comrade President, I was also happy, as Minister Davis said, about your explanation of the value-added <clears throat> goods from our side. We have been talking in the continent about adding value, beneficiation. I think the time to talk has come to an end. It should be the time of action. And we should take very concrete decisions, concrete actions, that must, of course, mean we are industrializing. This is a, a subject we are discussing in South Africa. We have taken very serious decision. The industrialization, <clears throat> that must be emphasized uh, in a particular way. Black industries, we need to spearhead this industrialization by so doing, growing, therefore, the economic cake. In no way can we stand on our feet and defend ourselves and do everything if we not beneficiate <clears throat> our resources, our wealth that we have that is beneficiated outside. I think the examples given by the minister indicate <clears throat> very clearly what needs to happen. Um, and I'm happy because among ministers and deputy ministers, there are young people who may not be thinking like us, who may be thinking differently. who also are more empowered than many of us were to ensure that this happens. <clears throat> uh, if we 
<clears throat> worked hard to bring about political freedom. I think it is their turn to work hard to bring economic freedom. Africa is the biggest continent of all put together. Some say you can put in into Africa all the continents of the world. It's very big. It has a young population. It has the, the resources that are beyond anything. <clears throat> we are now free. We are skilled. Why can't we change Africa? One of the things that we need not to be shy about is to use our political power to economically empower ourselves. That means, Comrade President, our definition of democracy <clears throat> must be realistic. It must not be sentimental. <clears throat> the principles of democracy and open everything must not be used to change into con perpetual subjugation. We must <clears throat> liberate ourselves must liberate ourselves. Nobody is going to do so except us. <clears throat> I think young people must uh, bear this in mind that uh, <clears throat> the black people all over the world are subjected to difficult conditions. Even in the most democratic countries, or the countries that declare to be leading democracies, a black person could be murdered by the police in public because he's black. And therefore, <clears throat> we used to have a slogan here in South Africa, which we joke about now, that black man, you are on your own. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm saying this because we should watch a very progressive laws, but that are progressive <clears throat> in a particular way. I'm saying you have political power, and political power, if you don't use it, it would be used against you too. <laughs> you must be bold, be correct, be effective for the sake of <clears throat> the suffering people. When people today say there's a growing gap between the rich and the poor, you will be found to be more <clears throat> on the poor side than the richer side. That's why this issue of beneficiation is absolutely crucial. You have parliaments make the laws. In many countries we have the majority, use the majority. And I can tell you if other people were in the majority, we'll use it effectively. Now, you can't say democracy is the rule of the majority and be in the middle of it and don't use the majority. And you who are in the majority looks like you are in the minority. <laughs> Very shy to take decisions that change the lives of our people because we are going to be given all the names. Be given all the names, but do it for your people. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm saying this here because I feel very strongly about this issue. Uh, in South Africa, we introduced the, <clears throat> the laws, very democratic, very user-friendly. Among them, <clears throat> the empowerment of black people. We call it black empowerment. avoided many things that would be severely criticized for. No matter how we did, we were criticized that it is, in fact, racism in reverse. And yet we had history that had put us in poverty. And we are trying to get out of poverty. Not in a radical manner, in a constitutional manner. And what happened? Many of our business here <clears throat> joined companies and had shares. And they thought the economy is changing because they had shares. Um, and indeed, they look different. <laughs> 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 but that was very superficial. They were not owning and controlling the economy. They were not even beginning to make an inroad. If we talk about the Johannesburg Stock Exchange today, only 3%. <clears throat> that represents the black economically powerful or whatever. <clears throat> That's why we made a call that in no way should we say we are changing the balance with through shares. I mean, you could own shares in a company. It could be a liquidated, you are gone. But in any case, if you <clears throat> live on shares in companies, they are not in control. We want industrialists who must own, control the economy. Very crucial. For that, <clears throat> you must not be shy about it. Because it is going to help the black people for the first time to benefit properly. And beneficiation and benefiting should not be superficial, should not be something that you feel nice about. It should be something that changes the lives of the majority who are black <clears throat> for the better. <coughs> now I'm saying all of this because I'm happy business <clears throat> people from Zimbabwe and South Africa are here. To know that from our political point of view, we are very clear. We don't know about you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Because what we say as policies, as programs, you should put it in practice, concrete practice. <clears throat> when I talk to South African business, I always say, one day I will be very happy to see a bank called <clears throat> Mr. Mfukengi Bank. I don't know who was standard, who was net. <laughs> but I know I'm for King. <clears throat> to me, <clears throat> the struggle to liberate ourselves economically is a crucial one. You should be as angry as we were when we were liberating ourselves. <laughs> We were prepared for anything in order to liberate ourselves politically. I think you should do the same. It's urgent, it's important, it's correct to have that answer. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we are aware of our responsibility as governments to do everything possible to remove all the hindrances <clears throat> perceived or otherwise to investment. If you think we are not doing right things to give you more opportunities, tell us. Let us talk about it. We are prepared to do everything possible to create an environment that is conducive for investment. Take advantage of it. We're not saying other people shouldn't, but you should be more in front of the queue to take that advantage. As business, you will play your part by ensuring that such investment leads to meaningful jobs for our people in order to improve the quality of their lives. Let me make this usual <clears throat> example I always make and other people could feel uncomfortable about it. I was once an MEC for Economic Affairs in my province of Wazulu Natal. <clears throat> and people will come and say, Comrade, <clears throat> we want to see you uh, to discuss and we want, must go to business. I said, okay, come. And they come in a delegation for a number of people. And they introduce, well, this is me, you know, this is Mr. Smith. Uh, so and so and so and so and so and so. We are here to discuss matters. <clears throat> well, who oh, Mr. Smith is better? <laughs> Mr. Smith is going to present it. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I listened to Mr. Smith, and very fluent, very accurate, very everything. <clears throat> when Mr. Smith is over, well, we still have a comrade. We beg you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> I want Mr. Mfukain to put it. That's why I'm saying we're happy that young people are skilled now, are empowered. They must do what Mr. Smith can do. Not Ian. Not Ian. <laughs> Not Ian Smith. Another Smith. <laughs> we share Smiths too. <laughs> As we share <laughs> Cecil Rose. <laughs> No, the very, very, this, these two countries are very close. <laughs> Absolutely. You have uh, <clears throat> everything uh, common. <clears throat> Comrade President, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> as I close, <clears throat> I would like to reiterate South Africa's support for the important deliberations you are having here, which will serve as a catalyst for stronger economic relations between our sister republics. Now, we are talking here about radical transformation of the economy, and we are busy putting that into practice in defining it, in, in, in looking at what is it that we do to ensure that it happens. And I'm hoping that as you meet in these big numbers for the first time, you are not going to be shy to discuss your challenges, what you think needs to be done, what you think you needed to tell us as, <clears throat> as governments to help facilitate your success so that we can hear your voices. We need to hear your voices more clearly and loudly. 
so that we can change our Southern Africa, our continent. <clears throat> well, we wish you good luck, and I wish the Businesses Forum every success in our discussions. Take into consideration our feelings. We feel very strongly, and we think you are the ones who are carrying the most effective instruments to change the lives of our people. If you are clear about that, you must know you have a task. You have both national tasks and the task of the region to change the economy. You can change things politically. If economically they are not changed, forget it. <laughs> Economic change, correct policies that assist the citizens that's what we need. That's what we need. <clears throat> Otherwise, we'll have to change positions. We'll become two business people. We'll become politicians. <laughs> Tina, we can move very far. No comrade President Gap. Because as a sub, we are not shy. Not so. No more about Tina and we don't care. As long as we lead our country. Huh? So thank you.